Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had happened. The chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel. Then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. Soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And the story is circulated among the Jews to the present day. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers. I'm not sure where to begin because. This morning I'm seeing red, so if I get emotional, be forewarned. In my five years as a deacon, I never ceased to be amazed how something written 2,000 years ago can be so relevant to us today. It is so ironic that the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, they were, they were part of a generation that had been waiting generations, generations, hundreds and hundreds of years for the Messiah to come. The Messiah comes. He does all these signs. He raises Lazarus from the dead. And these clowns want to kill Lazarus and kill him. They, they, they want to kill the Messiah that they've been waiting hundreds and hundreds of years for. And then, ultimately, when he's raised from the dead, they want to cover it up. And sometimes things come to me, especially when I'm laying in bed awake at night because I'm upset. But I thought of the seven deadly sins, and those were pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, sloth. Five of them applied to those guys. They pride, they couldn't admit their mistake. They were greedy, they didn't want to lose their positions, they were well compensated. They were certainly angry enough to kill wrath. They were envious of Jesus and the fact that, they, that the people may follow him, and they continued to lust for power. And it just, it just blows my mind. And then I think about today. And yesterday's what's got me seeing red, and I'm still seeing red. But We have a president who has officiated in a gay marriage. We have a president that just recently said publicly on national TV that if you reelect me, I will make abortion the law of the land. And the bill that passed the Senate on abortion that he said he would sign was abortion on demand up to the moment of birth. Fully viable baby in the birth canal and it can be killed. Now we're on this trans thing that he supports, putting men in locker rooms. At the University of Pennsylvania, this Will Thomas claiming to be a female is in a locker room with one of the girls who had been raped at age 16 and she's upset about this. And yet, the administration supports this. There was just a soccer tournament a few weeks ago over in, over in the UK. Five transgender men on a woman's team, they cleaned the course. Won the championship game 10 to nothing. 
<laughs> there was a woman swimmer becoming a man, went to the NCAAs, 72 swimmers, she came in 71st. The guy that came in, the real guy that came in 72nd, wasn't even swimming in his event, he was, he was substituting for a guy. You don't see women trying to participate in that sports. And yet we, we let them into their locker rooms. All the 50 years of women have fought in the army for their rights to have equal sports, to have equal opportunities, and this administration fights that. But why was I so upset yesterday and continue to be? When I think it can't get any worse, it turns around and it does get worse. The traditional Easter egg roll. You know, they decorate all the Easter eggs really fancy. They have professionals come and paint them. And this year they asked children to submit, to do art and submit designs for the Easter eggs to be collected at the Easter egg roll. There was one stipulation. There couldn't be anything religious on the Easter egg submission. It's Easter. It's our most holy day of the year. It is commemorating the greatest event in human history where Jesus Christ proved to the world he was God by rising from the dead. And this Catholic president won't have any religious symbols at his Easter egg hunt. And then to make matters to just pile it on me, pile it on us, every one of you. This is rubbing our face in it. He says, Easter Sunday is Trans Visibility Day. Even our liberal Pope Francis has said this gender ideology, this changing of gender, is grave matter, it's serious, and it's very, very bad and evil. Those same five deadly sins applies to our president. I'm a deacon and I don't understand everything. I'll admit that. I don't get it. I'm not a bishop. I'm not that smart. But what in the world do you have to do as the evil that you have to do as a Catholic to bring a bishop to say you can't go to communion anymore until you repent. I think he ought to be excommunicated. It's probably going to be in trouble with my bishop, but I think he should be excommunicated. How, what more evil can you do and still be a Catholic? As Catholics, we're supposed to bring the light of Christ. We're supposed to be the moral compass. And here we have a Catholic in the White House and and what an opportunity to spread the good news and to point this country in the right moral direction. And instead, we go the opposite way. And I don't understand. And that's why I'm seeing red. So what can we do? Pray. Pray for all Catholic leaders that they will act like Catholics and lead like true Catholics. Pray for them. Pray for our country to turn back to God and to reject this evil we've embraced. Because we're on the wrong road as a country. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because you're here and you don't have to be. It's not even mass. It's, but you are being fed. The greatest gift in the world. So prayer is powerful. Pray and if you're so disposed tell our tell your legislators that we want to get back on the right track. And we don't want to put up with some of this stuff that so bald-faced invades women's privacy. As women are made in the image of Christ, in the image of God, and they deserve to have their dignity and their privacy. Mary is the, she's the mentor, she's the witness.